Hi and welcome to another episode of PeaceMed TV. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at how we can set the levels correctly inside Reaper. It's referred to generally as gain staging and it's something that we need to take a look at because it's vitally important to get this all set up correctly to make sure that you give your recordings the best possibility for good mixing without the worry of clipping and problems with the overall levels of your audio sources. So let's crack on and take a look at how we can do this. So I've got a simple project set up in Reaper. Ah, it's got multiple guitar tracks, some drum tracks and so on. Now, the way I've set this up is that I'm using VSTs to create the sounds that I want to work with. So everything I input other than the MIDI items are all input into my, my uh, door, in this case Reaper, direct. So we're just dealing with completely unpro sig unprocessed signals. So as long as the level that's going in isn't too hot so we can of course clipping issues, we've got a good starting point. However, once we start to work with VSTs, you're gonna find that they will apply their own levels of gain and things like that. And it's something we need to compensate for to make sure that we don't have too hot a signal in the overall uh, sort of master channel ready for when we start mixing. So what we're gonna concentrate on in this video is taking a look at how we can adjust the levels before they hit the, uh, the faders to make sure that we can leave our fader set at a zero point. So we, when we come into the actual mixing process, we want to adjust the individual levels of each of those particular tracks or each of those channels. We can do so knowing that our initial signal is clean and not causing any level problems. So let's see how we can work with that. So if I just expand my mix it out, you can see everything is set to its nominal point. This is the default setting, nothing is being adjusted. If I hit the play, you can see that a lot of my levels are way too hot. You can see they're going up to the yellow and actually peaking out. We take a look at the guitar master that's peaking out just at a minus 3.6 decibels, way too hot. And if we take a look at our master channel over on the left hand side, you can see we are getting very close to the zero dB point. And as soon as we haven't actually mixed anything on this, we really don't want to be doing that. As you can see, I've peaked at plus 0.04. So we need to go in and adjust the initial input levels of the various different tracks on this to bring it to a nice level of parity to make sure that we've got a good point for working with our mixes. So as I said at the beginning of this video, I'm using VSTs for pretty much everything and my drums are all recorded through MIDI. So let's take a look at the guitars to start off with. You can see that if I click on the effects option and bring the effect in, you can see that I'm using Easy Mix and I've got a particular guitar set in. So what I'm going to do is just close that down a second and I'm going to go to my, in this instance, guitar right and I'm going to solo that out so I can see what level I'm working with on that. And let's just bring this up slightly so we can see just a little better. Okay, so let's just bring this back in. So to keep an eye on guitar right, channel 12, and when I hit play, you'll see we're now peaking out at around minus 12 dB. That's not too bad, but I want to bring everything down to minus 18 to make sure that everything is sitting at minus 18 at its peak. If it goes over a little bit, because we, we're dealing with drums and guitars where obviously there's dynamics involved, that doesn't matter, but we want to really keep it to about minus 18 across the board. So what we've got in this particular VST is we've got the input level, which is my guitar going into this particular patch, going through the processing, and then my output level. So if we adjusted the faders at this point, it would have no real difference to the input and output levels on our VST. All we'll be doing is adjusting the post effects uh, volume, which is not what we want to do. So all I need to do to bring this down in line is go to my output level and reduce that. Let's just start this back up again. So I've got it from the beginning. Reduce that down until I see that I'm peaking out around about the minus 18. Also, you can come back and tweak this at any point afterwards if you find you need a little bit more, a little bit less. But there we go. There's our first one set. So I can just drop that out. I can unsolo that one and go back to my second guitar, my center guitar. As you can see, this is doing the same thing, peaking at around about minus 7.1, which is taking our guitar master channel to minus 3.1. So we're just too hot overall. So I'll just go into my effects. And the same again, we can just go into the output, bring this down until we get into around about the minus 18. Like I say, we don't mind if it peaks a little bit over, that's fine. Now I can keep on doing that for all of my channels. I can then solo that and we'll just do the same on the guitar left. 
but just for speed I'll go through and do that I pause the video and come back okay so if I start the track back up you'll find now that when I've adjusted all my actual pre FX uh, levels that everything is sitting in the mix a lot nicer now all my levels are closer to each other my overall guitar master is down that's a lot quieter yes we're peaking just over the minus 18 db and i've adjusted these to just sit just a little bit lower than minus 18 so the cumulative effect on the guitar master is a lot less which obviously means that then over on the master channel on the left hand side the cumulative effect on there is less again so you can see we're not getting anywhere close to the sort of the zero point so now the next thing is we need to take a look at how we can do the same thing with our drums now because these are MIDI instruments, it's going to work slightly differently. We don't have a, an actual input signal. Yes, we have velocity that we can work with and we can adjust the velocity, but the reality is that's not necessarily the best way to go about doing it. So let's just go in and take a look at the drums and I'll solo that a second and we'll just expand that back up. And as you can see, they're pretty much all over the place. Yes, the things like the hi-hats and stuff like that are lower in the mix, but everything else is just going way, way too loud, just way too hot. So what I can do is, because this is a VST and if we're looking at something like, in this instance, Easy Drummer, what I can do is I can go to the mixer on my Easy Drummer and I can adjust my levels on this. And again, this is before it hits the fader. So once we've got everything set up the way we want it, we can use the faders then to adjust the actual mix of the instruments in relation to each other. This is just reducing or increasing their initial input level. It's not mixing, it's just bringing their levels down to where we want them to be. So let's just move this over a second and just bring this back up so we can see what we're doing. And I'll solo on the kick drum. Now I haven't named these, but I know that the first channel is, uh, is my kick drum. So if I just go onto that, you can see they're just way too hot. So these first two channels are my kick drum. So I'm going to select both of those in Easy Drummer and I'm just going to go to the faders and I'm going to bring this down until I can see on my main mixer panel where my levels are sitting. So I'm dropping those down quite nicely so they're coming down where I want them to be. And I can do the same thing now. I can unsolo that and I can go to my snare and do the same thing on my snare top, I should say. So bringing that down around about the minus 18 around that kind of figure and we'll do the same for our snare bottom there we go so i'll go through and just quickly adjust the rest of those to bring them in line just to show you exactly what we're doing on there and the effect it has on the overall mix okay so that's all of my levels adjusted inside my vst software so now if i start playing the song you can see what we're getting then is all of our levels are now sitting where we want them to be. They're all giving us plenty of headroom. None of our faders are actually touched because everything is done before it hits the faders. And you can see we take a look at our master channel on the left hand side. You can see we've now got plenty of headroom when we just start mixing. And now when we're ready and we want to sort of start bringing all the levels in proportionally and we want to sort of automate faders and do all the other things you want to do when you're mixing your track you've now got plenty of scope to work with that knowing that all of these faders are set to parity so everything you're going to do will adjust the end result as opposed to when you start playing up with the VSTs they'll have an effect on it now obviously this works in another way that when you start adding EQ or compression and things like that to any given channel you'll find sometimes they'll either improve the amount of volume or increase the amount of volume or decrease it so what you're going to need to do is when you apply those effects is adjust the volume output or the gain on any one of those those um, the VSTs any of those um, effects you're going to apply to it to make sure you put it back to a zero point and the easy way of doing that is just to AEB it where you can turn the effect on and off just to check that the levels are pretty much exactly where they should be but this has just been the basics of gain staging in Reaper this is going to give you a, an overview of how you can set your tracks up to make sure you give you the best possible chance of a good end result mix plenty of headroom plenty of scope to work with your tracks without clipping and problems with volume. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please hit the subscribe button below and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Join us on peacemegtv.co.uk or follow us on many of the other different social networks that we work with. So until next time, take care.